Okay, so when we left off, we were building the very first version of the model, and I said that, you know, there are kind of really um, three major goals here, well, two major goals, right? Um, first, just to create the agents, and then have them adopt random, right? right? Um, as part of that, there's kind of a sub-goal of actually giving them the ability to adopt or having the property of adoption, right? Uh, so let's go in, let's first of all just add in our slider so we have that. So I'm going to create a slider called uh, num uh, agents, right? Um, and I'm going to have it go from 0 to 1 to 100. It's pretty good. And let's start at 50. That's fine with me. Um, and we'll turn it to 50 at that point, right? Um, okay. And now, um, you know, the other thing that I didn't mention but you probably need to have, right, would be, since we have set up and go procedures, is set up and go buttons. So I'm going to create those as well at the same time. So set up and go. Um, and, and, you know, I'm going to click the go forever since we usually like to have that run until we turn it off again. Move it, need it up a little bit. Um, one thing that I haven't mentioned in the past, but just as kind of a little bit of NetLogo style, is that when we're creating these models, if we want um, a parameter to be set before we run the model, we tend to put it above the setup and go buttons. If it's a parameter that can change during the run of the model, then we put it below the setup and go buttons. But again, I want to emphasize this is NetLogo style. It's not anything that's enforced by NetLogo, but you'll notice that all the NetLogo models in the models library file follow that style. Okay, so we have our NetLogo set up and go buttons, and of course they don't do anything right now except for reset the ticks, which we've turned it on. Um, so let's go ahead and fill in the code, right? So on the code, um, you know, the first thing we're going to do is we have add a creation of agents routine. So let's create, so we'll change this comment a little bit to just say create the agents based on the slider, right? Um, so we'll create CRT, it's kind of the um, shorthand for that. Um, num agents, which will create number of agents based upon the input slider. Um, and I always implicitly start to put these down, these brackets. We don't have any, we're not, I haven't added anything in there yet. Uh, but you know, right here, we say that we want the adoption property uh, to be initialized, right? Um, and so we can correct this code a little. Adoption property is initialized, but we don't have adoption an adoption property yet, so we need to first add that in. Um, so let's just call it adopt. And as we talked about before, anything that ends in a question mark in that logo is considered to be a Boolean variable by style. Um, and so um, uh, you know we could have this be adopt or adopted maybe in a little bit, indicating that they've adopted the information that's diffusing through the network. Um, so we'll call this property related to adoption. Yeah. Okay. So now we can go ahead and create our number of agents and we can initialize that adopted property probably to false, right? Um, a couple other small things we mentioned, right, is you might want to separate the turtle spatially. So we could initially um, just set their x, y coordinates randomly as we've done in the past. Um, we might want to give them a consistent appearance, right? So we can set their color all to um, white initially, right? Since we have the, the black background uh, from the standard setup. Uh, and, um, you know, maybe we want to set their shape to person, right? We can go ahead and check to make sure we're doing everything. Now, we haven't done anything about adoption yet, but we could just go over and kind of see if that seems to be working. And sure enough, you know, we get set up, we get a bunch of different little uh, agents all over the world, right? Um, so now the last thing is to, oh, and you know, we can always double check just to make sure we're doing everything correctly, inspect one of those turtles and see if we have the adopted property and sure enough, we do. So now, of course, we can also at that same point go over and um, look at uh, adopting the, having them actually adopt, right? So almost every Go loop you're going to write in that logo is going to have an ask turtle somewhere in it that basically has all the agents take on some particular task. And in this case, it's going to be 
to um, decide to, or, you know, can call a number of things, you call it decide to adopt or adopt, it doesn't really matter. Uh, so in this case, I'm going to call it adopt, and then I'm going to create another procedure for adopt, right? Um, and, you know, I always like to set up and go are pretty self-explanatory in terms of what they do, but any other procedure I write, I always like to define that procedure in a comment. So this um, procedure will determine whether or not to adopt, right? Okay. Uh, so in this particular case, we're going to make it very simple since we just have them adopting randomly. So let's say if random 10 equals 1, set adopted to true. Now, um, we now know that this, I mean, we, we now know that we've created code to do this, but if we go back over to the interface, it's set up when we go, we don't really, we really can't tell anything, right? Um, and partially that's because if we go to inspect one of the turtles, right, they, do, they adopted is now set to true, right, because we've run the model for a while, but it doesn't show up. So one thing we could do is add a visual element to make sure that it's clear uh, that the, that the, um, the agents have adopted. So what we could do is that when they've adopted, we can also set their color to red, right? Um, and sure enough, we hit set up, and then we go, and they all turn red. Now, another thing I mentioned is, you know, we, had, we, set, we reset the ticks at the beginning of initialization, but right now, ticks is still zero, and that's because we forgot to tell NetLogo when a tick has passed. NetLogo doesn't know anything special about the go loop. So we actually have to tell it that every time the go loop runs, there is a, a tick has occurred, right? Um, and now if we hit set up and we hit go, right now it's gonna show us the number of ticks that have passed and we can see how many um, uh, agents have uh, adopted at that particular time. Um, so that's it for the model one. I uh, hope you enjoyed that, going through that. Uh, when I come back, we're gonna talk a little bit about how to create uh, the goals for model two. So for model two, I want you to think a little bit about making that adoption rule a little more specific, right? And more related to the pass model. So what I want you to do is I want you to think about how you would add a broadcast influence and social influence sliders to the model. Now you could call them P and Q, which is what uh, they're called in the original BAS model or something along those lines. Or you could call it media influence. I, I'm not really, I don't really care about the particular names. Uh, but just add a couple of parameters along those lines. And then have the agents adopt based on the BAS model, in the same way that the BAS model they do. So they, if that's the case, the agents adopt either due uh, to broadcast influence or due to social influence times the fraction of adopters. Right? Uh, you could also come up with a bunch of other different adoption rules if you wanted to as an optional extent. Uh, so uh, for that, you could do something. There are, there's some work by Granovetter and Watts and others about something called the linear threshold rule. Or if you wanted to look at the work of uh, Goldenberg and others on the uh, uh, independent cascade rules, right? Those are other rules that happen that all could be adopted for this model. Uh, that's beyond the scope of this particular model construction, but uh, we, I'm happy to discuss those. Now, when you're thinking about how to build these adoption rules, what things are you going to think about? Well, you're going to think about modifying that adopt um, uh, parameter that we have, the adopt procedure that we added in the last uh, model. Um, and then you're also going to want to think about um, using things like the if uh, statement, right, which allows you to do things if something is true. Uh, and you might want to also think about maybe making these, for instance, um, probabilities or something similar to a probability of an Right? Uh, in which case they're probably bound between zero and one, uh, and then you're using them to make the calculations in that way. Right? So um, that kind of gives you something to shoot for in uh, model two. Um, and when I come back, I'll talk about what that model may actually look like uh, from my perspective.